Hi everyone, this is Jeff Dunn from the ShuQ Training Department and this is part one of a three-part series that we're going to be doing in the next several weeks. And today what I'll be doing is talking about uh, the main features and functionality on ShuQ. I'll uh, basically give you a tour of the site. Um, we'll cover all these different tabs. Um, and I'll also take you through the process of entering leads, uh, show you what a job looks like, how to book a job, and also what it looks like from the client's perspective. So the idea behind today's webinar is basically just to show you how the system works. Now, in subsequent webinars, next week we'll be talking about how to configure some of the basic settings. Um, for instance, you know, setting up your pricing or setting up your contract templates. And then in the third week, we're going to talk about some of the more advanced settings, like setting up a contact form, syncing up your calendar, you know, things like that. So that's basically the schedule for the next several weeks. Um, like I said, today we'll be basically giving you an overview of the system. Now, if you guys have any questions along the way, there's a question box on the webinar panel, and you can answer, uh, ask them as we go along. Or if you want, you can wait till the end and ask questions then. I usually stick around an extra five to 10 minutes. Uh, this webinar is gonna run about, uh, about 45 minutes, so just so you know. And I also am recording it, so I will send out a recording to everybody as well. All right, so uh, without further ado, why don't we get started here? Uh, like I said, I'm going to start here on the dashboard, and I'm just going to work my way through these different tabs. All right, so this dashboard is basically like any other dashboard, right? Um, you'll have some metrics at the top here, like my leads and overdue invoices and such. Um, if I scroll down here, I can see my upcoming active jobs. So these are jobs that are um, basically happening in the next week. And then recent activity, this is like a notification area. So it shows important notices, like when clients make payments or you have a contract to countersign, um, things like that. And then also on the dashboard, there's the next seven days on the calendar. So I can see not just my upcoming jobs, but I might have, uh, you know, like standalone events on here or personal events or whatever. Basically shows me anything on the calendar. And we'll talk about the full calendar in just a second. But the idea behind the dashboard is just it gives you a quick summary of what's happening on your account. All right, any questions about that? And for anybody who just joined us, you can ask questions in the question box on the webinar panel. All right, perfect. So this next section, leads. So basically a lead is basically any unbooked job in ShuQ, right? Somebody contacts you for your services and you would put them into the system as a lead. And this lead board basically shows you the different stages a lead will go from the time they're brand new all the way up until the time they're an active job. So when you enter them in as a lead, and I'll quickly just summarize this, but we're going to come back to this later and talk more in depth. Um, basically, you would enter them as a lead, right, and they'll be in this new lead section. Then you'll qualify them, and that can mean anything you want, um, whatever it means to you. You know, you just determine, okay, these guys are a good fit for me right and you manually move them into this lead qualified section you know for some studios maybe the client responds to the pricing maybe you set up a meeting with them you know whatever um, once they're in lead qualified then you can actually send them a proposal and in that proposal a proposal is basically an invoice and a contract right all in one and you send that proposal out to them and the job would move into this proposal contract sent section OK, and then the client would navigate through the proposal. They would sign the contract, make a payment if necessary. And once they sign that contract, the shoot automatically moves into contract signed. And shoot, you would notify you uh, just to let you know that uh, you have a contract to sign. You would come into the system. You would countersign it. And when the studio countersigns the contract, it moves out of this section and it becomes an active job. So that's the basic flow of a lead, right? They'll come in as a new lead and they'll go right through this process. Um, and like I said, I'm going to come back to this section, and we're actually going to go through that a little bit more in depth. But I just wanted to give you guys an idea of uh, what this board was. All right, any questions about this section so far? All right, let me jump to the Jobs tab. So when you enter a lead into the system, you know, not only is it a lead, but it's also considered a job in ShuQ's terms. So these jobs, they could be either leads or book jobs. Um, and you can see I have a bunch here. And like I said, I'm going to come back here and we'll actually talk more in depth about a job. But here's my job list. And there's various filters over here so I can sort through my different um, types of jobs. 
Now, the contact list, it's basically all of your clients, but it can also include uh, other people, like maybe vendors that you deal with or referrers or other people associated with a job. So it's kind of like your master list. And if you click on somebody here, in their contact record at the top, it shows the main information, you know, like their address or their phone number, email address, you know, things like that. And you can always edit this information right up here under the edit button. Now down below here, it'll also show various other things associated with this contact. For instance, it'll show all of the different jobs that they've had with you in the past. Um, some customers are repeat customers, so they might have multiple jobs down here. And you can quickly jump to that job just by clicking on it. It'll also show any contracts that they've had with you in the past, any questionnaires that you've sent out to them. Um, it'll also track all of their invoices under here, um, any emails that you've sent out to them, and then you can also make notes about a client. So basically it just consolidates everything about this client under one contact record. So any questions about that? Oh, it looks like there is a question. Let me just take a quick look at this. Okay, so basically it's, um, right, so is it synced up to like a, a Mac? The question is, um, does this contact form or contact list sync up to Mac? Um, unfortunately it doesn't, but it's a good idea and I'm gonna pass that along to our development team. Um, basically you would have to, you know, enter it into this system and Mac. Now you can bulk import um, contacts if you want, right up here. Uh, you can import a CSV file, like if you have a thousand contacts and you just wanna bring them all in at once. So you could do that up here. Um, any other questions about the contact list? Alrighty, let's jump to the calendar. Oh, there's one question. Let me go back to contacts. Can you export a bunch of people? Uh, yes, there's a, there's a export uh, button right up here. You just highlight them and then export them. We're gonna further refine this section where you can actually filter through it you know, a little bit better, where you can you know, make targeted exports. All right, let me go to the calendar. Okay, so the calendar is like any other calendar. You know, it's going to show your, you know, book jobs, your leads. Um, you can also, you know, see what you want to see. Maybe you just want to see certain event types or certain jobs, right? So there's all sorts of uh, filters over here. You can also sync this calendar up to an external calendar. You know, like maybe you used uh, Apple Calendar or Google or Microsoft. So you could sync it up so that your book shoots in ShoQ show up in like your Google Calendar and then vice versa. You can sync it the other way where your Google items would show up in ShoQ. Um, so you can sync it up one way or the other way or both ways. And you do that under the settings tab and then they would appear under here. Um, one other thing about this calendar, you can also create standalone events. So in our old system, uh, the any event that you created had to be associated with a job. In the new system, you don't necessarily have to do that. Although you could if you wanted it to. So that's great if you're using like personal items. Um, you know, you just want to put like, I got to pick up the kids from school today. You know, you could put that right on the calendar. All right, any questions about the calendar? All right, let me jump to the document section. So this is a global view of all of your invoices, proposals, contracts, and questionnaires. Um, this is a great place to come. Like for instance, maybe you want to find all of your overdue invoices right? Um, there's all sorts of different sections here. There's also different filters over here to see what you want to see. So these are all my invoices that are upcoming or due today. Um, all of these things are also located on the job itself, just so you know. Now this reporting section is currently a work in progress, um, should be released in the next month or so, um, but basically this is where you'll be able to generate reports on your income that you're taking in, um, job statistics, like you know how many leads that I booked this month, you know that sort of thing, um, you know all sorts of metrics like that. And by the way, you know you will find you know certain things in ShoQ are still being built, you know it's a work in progress, um, but we're continuing to add like functionality to it every week. So, you know, um, just look out for those uh, feature updates. 
And it looks like there is a question. What if a, I need to have an invoice deleted or voided? So um, currently you can't do that, but that'll be um, that functionality should be released shortly. Any other questions? All right, now if you're brand new to ShuQ, um, this settings tab is probably where you're gonna spend most of your time because you need to do some minimal setup on the account to really start using it. Um, like I said, we're gonna talk about these settings in the next two webinars, but if you wanna get a jump start, the really basic settings that you wanna get dialed in are the account, uh, the jobs settings, the products and pricing, and then payments, invoices, and taxes. So the things under there will allow you to actually, you know, book jobs. Oh, one other really important one, contracts. So you'll need that to book a job as well. Um, we're gonna get more into this, like I said, next week. Um, but if you do have any questions about this stuff, oh, one other thing, I know there's some uh, legacy users in this system and we're gonna migrate a lot of this data over. So you probably wouldn't wanna, you know, recreate your entire account um, because anything, all the old data would be added to anything new that you create in the new system. So for you guys, if you're on the legacy system, you probably just want to focus in on, you know, getting your account settings dialed in um, and the payments, invoices, and taxes section. And maybe the calendar sync if you want to sync that up right now. But like I said, the other stuff would be imported for you guys. All right. Um, I was about to say, you know, if you get stuck on any of these things, feel free to contact our support team. Um, you can use the chat button right down here and you can start a conversation. Um, we're here eight to five Monday through Friday, but if it's after hours, just leave a message here and we'll respond um, when we get back in the next business day. Um, one other thing under here, there's this setup guide, this onboarding setup guide. Um, it's listed under the settings tab, but it basically walks you through the different settings to get your account dialed in. Um, and if you click on a setting, it links to a help hub article where you can, you know, uh, basically help you configure it. Now this setup guide is also way up here. There's this little bar at the top. A lot of you have probably seen, and this will also walk you through. It's the same exact thing. And we also pay you to set up your account. So you get product codes to simply color lab as you finish the different sections. All right, looks like there's a few questions about this. Um, let me, Take a quick look here. Uh, will pricing be imported from legacy? Yes, it will. So all of your products and all of your packages. Um, and if you are a legacy user and you do want to migrate over, contact our support team um, and we can put you on the list there. Um, what I do recommend though for legacy users, you know, like I said before, the new system doesn't have all of the functionality of the old system. So I recommend that you test it out first and make sure it has the things that you use. Because there's a lot of features in the old system, but not everybody uses, you know, every single feature. So just make sure it's right for you at this point, And then, you know, tell us that you're ready to migrate. Um, let me just read a few other questions here. Uh, in the setup guide, it asks you to import a background image. Where does that go? That's a good question. You're referring to this. Um, that would go at the top of a questionnaire. Uh, we're also probably going to use it in various other sections um, currently, but it's just used on the questionnaire. But it'll probably appear on you know other client-facing pages as well in the future. Um, is there a list of differences between the old and the new? There's a video that I can send you, Garrett. Um, it lists some of the main ones, and I'll also follow up with uh, some other things. Like I said, the, you know, the new system's currently in flux, so we, we're adding new functionality every day. So, um, and let me answer a few more questions here. Oh, once we migrate, do we discontinue the use of the legacy system? So you'll still have access to the legacy system, um, but I probably wouldn't use it. Um, you know, maybe you want to, you know, collect your pending payments on there um, and just let those run out. 
Um, but for like new leads and new jobs, I would put them in the new system at that point. So you would still have it to reference. Um, you just probably wouldn't want to use it because we're not going to migrate that data a second time. That's important to know. All right. Um, Uh, our product picture is going to show in package proposals. So they show up on the add-ons page. Um, I assume you're referring to um, the actual package itself, like on an invoice. Um, that's possible. I can suggest it. And I'm making a note right now. But they, they should show up on that add-ons page currently. All right. I think I got all these questions. Um, all right, let me just talk about a few more things, and then I want to show you guys like the process of entering a lead into ShuQ um, and booking that job. So just a few other things. In the upper right-hand corner, um, because you're a ShuQ member, you have access to Simply Color Lab discounts all the time, and you can always find those discounts right here. And that's as long as you're an active member. Um, there's also the Help Center right up here. So this help center, like I said before, it has a lot of instructional articles and videos, um, you know, to help get you dialed in. So all sorts of things here, training videos. This getting started guide sort of walks you through some of those uh, basic settings that I talked about before, right here. So let the help center be your friend. All right, so that was the quick tour. Let's talk about the process of putting leads in. Um, what you would do, you know, somebody contacts you, you know, maybe they call you, email you, whatever. What you would do is come into ShuQ, click on leads, and we're going to enter this person in, in as a new lead. And you'll see this modal pop up. And if they're already in your system, you could select their name right here. I'm going to add somebody brand new because that's typically what a lead is. And let's give this person an email address. And if they are associated with a company, you could put that in there. I'm not going to do it for this one. Um, job role. So what it's asking me here is what kind of role is this person playing on this job? Um, and these roles are all customizable under the settings tab. You see I have a lot of ones for wedding, but you can create anything you want. And you can also get rid of these as well. There's some preset ones in your account. So for this person, I'm going to just make them a, a client. It's a good general all-around job role for like portrait sessions. And that's exactly what I'm going to do here. I'm going to make a portrait session. But you can also, it's asking me what type of job this is. You can also customize these as well under the settings tab. So I'm just going to make it a family session. And then if I know the job location, I can put that in here. I don't necessarily have to. I can always put that, you know, later if I wanted to. And if I know the, the, the date of the shoot, I can put that in as well. So I'll just choose a date in the future. I can set the time or I can make it all day. And then you can also assign a workflow. I'm not going to get too deeply into workflows today. Um, but basically, they are a series of tasks that you do to fulfill either the job or uh, fulfilling a product for a client. Um, and Currently, it's still a work in progress. We have workflows for leads. So it'll basically tasks associated with the process of uh, making that lead a book job. And we'll add the, the, the booked workflows and the product workflows a little bit later. We'll also be adding more functionality to the uh, lead workflow. But I'm going to just keep it simple today. And there we go. I've just created a new lead in the system. They're right here on my board. It also added this as a job under the jobs tab. And that main contact, it also put them in my contact list. So basically, I accomplished three things at once okay, by uh, creating that lead. And it looks like there's a few questions. Let me just take a quick look at them before we move on. You have to have a main contact um, when you're entering a lead into the system. So you would have to you know, establish them as the main contact. Later on, you could change it 
you know, you can add other contacts to a job later on and then make those other people the main contact. Is there a way to avoid entering a new lead multiple times? Um, you can, you know, do a quick search to see if they're already in your system, um, but it's not going to stop you from entering the, the person's name twice. I mean, some people do have the same name, Bob Smith, you know, John Brown. Um, you read this question. Oh, gotcha. So it was just a follow-up question about the main contact. Um, so what you'd want to do in that case, you would need to put somebody in there. You know, maybe you would put the event planner um, as the main contact initially, and then later on you would change it once you gather up the information of the actual clients. All right, so here we have my lead board, right? I'm actually going to just click on this and it'll take me right to that job. So this is pretty much what every job looks like, right? I have the main information up here. Um, so it has my shoot date, my main contact right here. Down below, I have different tabs. So all jobs include events. And basically, this is a portrait session. It has one event on this job timeline. Um, this is also a workflow right above it. I don't have any tasks. I didn't assign a workflow to it. But if I did, I would see tasks up here um, related to the job. Now, on this job timeline, you can also create other events. So for instance, uh, in the case of like a family portrait session, I might create an ordering session. And I just click the plus button on the job timeline. And now I can type in my information for this ordering session right over here. And you see how it's adding it to the job timeline over here? And I can put a location. I can specify what type of event this is. So these are all customizable as well. I think I have order right here. I can set the date. I can write a description about what this event is entails. Um, those are internal notes only. Um, one other thing, all of the events on the job timeline can also have their own timeline. So it might not apply to this ordering session, but if say I have a wedding day event, right? And I wanna put the timeline of the wedding day, I can put that on here. So for instance, you know, I do getting ready shots from 10 to 12, from 12 to two, I shoot the ceremony, and then the rest of the day I shoot the uh, reception that event could have its own timeline. But they don't necessarily have to. But hopefully you guys get the, the, the idea of adding events to the job. Any questions about that? I just want to make sure you guys understand that. It looks like there are a few questions here. All right, so, so there's a question here, you know, um, about multiple jobs per client. So yes, you know, a client could have multiple jobs. Um, and that's what I would kind of recommend that you do. Like if they do a portrait session every year, you know, keep those separate. Now in some instances, uh, you may want to just add those new jobs or those new sessions to the same job timeline under the same job. For instance, uh, some studios do like a maternity session and newborn session right? They, they might do a three month, a six month and a nine month session, right? In that case, since it's really all related to the same job, I would keep it on the same job and just add those events to the job timeline. But, you know, if it's a really a separate job, like a different family session each year, I would create new jobs for those. Um, let me read a few other questions here. Oh, so that's a good, this is a good question. Um, they're all good questions, but uh, this is a really useful feature that um, Garrett's bringing up. Um, so he wants to be able to basically save a timeline, say like a wedding. You do an engagement session, you do a rehearsal dinner, the wedding day, and then you do some uh, you know, post-shoot ordering viewing session, right? Um, and he wants to save that as a template. So when he chooses a wedding, it just automatically loads that. So that will probably be coming. Um, it's not something we're actively working on, but it is something that's definitely on our radar. So you wouldn't have to set up those um, events every time. Uh, another question here, can you just add a shoot like in the legacy system without sending a proposal? Not currently, but that, that'll be in our next release where you can either put a lead into the system or just put a book job in. 
Um, I'm going to talk about email in just a second. And I'm just trying to read this question. Can you skip parts of the new lead workflow and move them into the qualified lead without checking all of the boxes? Yes. Um, what you can do to make somebody, this is a new lead, I can manually move them into qualified lead just like that. I can also do the same thing right on the lead board. So you'll find in ShuQ, you know, you can do the same thing in different places. All right, so I think I got to those questions. Um, so those are events on the job. Now there's also a document section where you'll have proposals, and this is what we'll create to uh, book the client here. We'll create a proposal. It'll basically be an invoice and a contract, and we'll send that out to the client. Um, and when there is a contract or multiple contracts, they would show up under here. You can also send questionnaires from a shoot to gather up more information from your clients under this section. Um, invoices. So this is still a lead, so there isn't an invoice yet, but those would appear under here as well, anything associated with this particular job. Uh, contacts and emails. So this is what we're about to talk about. So I mentioned before, you can add additional contacts to a job, and you can do that right here, and you can set those roles for those people, and you can also designate them as the main contact if necessary. Um, this is also where you would send an email from. So I could manually type one here, like this, just like that. Or I can create email templates for those emails that you send out over and over again. So for instance, you like a pricing guide. Just selected that template. And notice how the template uses variables. They're basically placeholders of information. And they put uh, information right into that template. And this template also has an attachment, my pricing guide. So you can send this out. Now, let me go back to that question about emails. Can we direct emails to get forwarded directly to certain personnel? So that's not possible yet, but I'll, I'll suggest that. Um, what happens in this email instance is I would send this out. It would land in the client's inbox. When they hit reply, the reply will come back into ShuQ and it'll get logged under this uh, email section with the job. Um, it will also go to the studio address, the company address that's listed under settings. But I think what Rachel is saying is she'd want certain emails um, to go to certain um, members in her studio. And I'll def definitely suggest that. Um, let me just read a few more questions. Is it possible to upload a photo to a lead? Um, I'm, I assume you're talking about uh, like adding like PNGs or JPEGs to the, the job itself. Um, you'll be able to upload files a little bit later on. Um, that's still a work in progress, but you'll be able to upload you know anything you want, PDFs, spreadsheets, uh, PNG, and also have them appear in the client area, as we'll see. Or you can uh, make attachments on those emails and email it to them. Oh, like a, oh, I'm sorry, there's a, so Garrett's asking, you know, like a profile image. I assume you mean like for the contact itself, um, you can do that under the, the contacts tab. Uh, can you set up an automated text reminder to go out in advance of scheduled events? Um, that's not currently possible, but we're working on those automations as well. Uh, it will definitely have um, email automations, and I, I think we'll probably end up having text as well at some point. Um, will clients still have the access to their client area? Um, yes, and we'll see that in just a second. I'll take you guys through the booking process. Um, finally, on a job, there's this notes and activity section. So you can make internal notes here, right? Call it whatever you want and type whatever you want. And the client doesn't see these, you know, it would just be strictly for the studio. 
Now, right up here, there's uh, some quick actions, like you can send emails, you know, send a questionnaire, uh, you can print out the job information by creating a job sheet, um, or you can navigate to the, the various tabs under here and do those actions. One other thing about these events, the information up here is controlled by the main event on the job timeline. So if I edit the main event here, like the location, um, it'll edit this information up here, just so you know. All right, so now we're gonna book this job. So they're a lead, we've qualified them, we wanna send them a proposal. We're gonna come in here and, and go into the proposal builder. Um, before I do that, looks like there's a few other questions. So regarding new features, um, we, we sometimes email, we definitely post notes in this chat messenger. So you would log in and you would see like a pop-up like this, and it would link to our release notes. And our release notes are in our help center. So there's an announcement section in there, and you can always, you know, look up, you know, what bugs we fixed and also what features and improvements we've made. Um, are emails able to be scheduled at a certain time of the day? Um, there's no scheduling aspect yet for emails, but that'll probably be coming as well. Where you can designate it, you know, send this email at 9 a.m. tomorrow, for instance. Uh, the location name, that's a good um, suggestion. Um, we should put the location name up here, not just the address. I'm making a note about that. And by the way, if you guys have uh, feature requests, you know, you see things like um, you think should be added, um, just contact our support team and we can pass them along to the development team. All right, let's book this job. So we're gonna come into the document section. We're gonna create a proposal. And it takes us into the proposal builder. And what we're gonna do is basically choose a package for the client. We're gonna configure some invoice settings, assign personnel if necessary, choose a contract, and then email it out to the client. So step number one, we choose a package. And these are the different packages that I've already created in my system. This is why you create packages, so you can easily select them here. Now, when I say package, it could be as elaborate as these like wedding packages that I'm selecting, where it has a bunch of products in it, right? Or it can be as simple as this standard portrait package that just includes a session fee. So when I use the term package, you know, that's what I'm referring to, okay? I know a lot of portrait photographers, you guys just collect session fees up front, and then later on, uh, clients will order products and whatnot. So that's how you would configure a package for something like that. And notice how I'm adding multiple packages into this proposal. That means the client's gonna have a choice between these three packages. So clients can only choose one package. Um, if you wanted multiple packages, I mean, I'll suggest it. Let me write that one down. Um, currently, if you wanted them to choose multiple packages, you would have to combine packages. Um, I don't have a list of features that are planned in the, or, um, that are in the works, but I can quickly rattle off some. Um, we're working on those workflows that I said. That's a big project for uh, book shoots and products and also lead uh, workflow enhancements. Um, we're working on QuickBooks integration, um, that reporting section. There's going to be an Android app um, probably in the next couple of weeks. There's an app for iOS already in the system, and we're continuing to, to enhance that as well. Um, there's a few other things that are coming as well. Usually we do one or two big releases each week, each month, um, usually at the beginning and like two weeks later. And then sometimes there's smaller releases in there. Oh, there, oh I forgot one big one. Uh, there's going to be a booking module as well where you will be able to basically set a date for, say you're doing a series of portrait sessions on, a, on one date and they're all gonna be like an hour long. You can you know, set that up, it'll generate a link. You can give that link to your clients, either on your website, email them, and they'll be able to choose an available time and make a payment without going through this proposal process. So that'll be coming very shortly as well. Uh, 
Um, all right, so I've chosen a couple packages here. And by the way, you don't have to choose multiple ones. You could just offer one if you wanted to. Um, now we're going to configure some of the settings for this. So I'm just going to manually create these. But you could create presets that just automatically load a certain configuration under here. But I want to show you guys you know, how to do it manually. So first, we're going to decide how we're going to collect payments. We can collect it manually any which way we want, cash, credit, some other credit card system that I'm using. Or if you integrate a merchant account into ShuQ, those options become available up here. So I actually have two options, right? Square and Stripe because I've integrated my two accounts in. So I'll use Stripe for this one. Um, you can also allow clients to pay with check. if you're. So the client would have two options, pay by card or pay by check in this instance. Uh, payment schedule. So I'm going to create a custom schedule. And you can have as many payments as you want or as few. It's up to you. And I'll just add a payment. And I'm going to add two for this one. So I'll do the percentage of the total. So I'll collect 50% at booking time. And then I'm going to create the remaining balance. I'll make that day of the event. So now I have two payments on this particular job. And I'll save it. Now, once again, you can, if you use the same payment schedule over and over again, you can create preset payment schedules. And you do that under the settings tab. And I could have just simply selected these and it would have loaded that configuration. Um, apply a discount. So once again, I can create a, a new discount from scratch or I can select one from my preset list like that. Whoops. Uh, taxes. So if you need to collect taxes, you'll set your tax rates up under the settings tab and then you can select it here. So I just have one tax rate so it's and it's my default so it automatically loaded. And then finally, proposals can expire in a certain amount of time or not. You know, it's up to you. Um, this is really useful like if you have like wedding clients and you really want to lock them down, um, you know, setting an expiration date tends to motivate them. So basically, you want to get these uh, settings dialed in. And let me just ask, answer some questions here. Can you do a proposal um, in the new system if you don't you if, if you don't want to send an invoice? So in that so you basically you want to uh, have them sign a contract, but you don't want to create an invoice. In that case, I wouldn't use this proposal process. What I would simply do is send them a contract right from the job. Or you can also send a standalone invoice as well. So when it says pay by check, um, it means basically you're collecting that payment manually any which way. Um, you're basically not using a credit card. All right, let me proceed. So if I want, um, I can then assign personnel to this job. I don't have to. I can. I can always change this later as well. These are people in my studio. And then finally, we're going to choose a contract for this client. So I have two templates that I've created. I'll select this one. And let me show you guys what this template looks like on the back end. Once again, this template uses variables like those email templates, and it's just going to pre-populate with information from the job when the client actually sees it. And it has all my terms. And you create this template under the settings tab. It then becomes available when you send a proposal or when you send a standalone contract. Now the last step is to email the proposal to the client. And I'm just going to select one of my templates. Now this email will automatically have a link appended to it, and the client's going to click on that link to view and sign the contract. And we're going to cheat the system. I'm not actually going to log into an email, but I am going to go to the booking site. And you guys can always find it under this uh, contacts and emails tab. 
So remember I said, you know, the client would get that email, they would click on a link in that email and it'll launch this booking site in their browser. And it's basically gonna be a step-by-step -step process that they're gonna go through. So let me jump over to that section. This is the first page of the booking process. And yes, uh, many studios have asked to customize uh, this page. Um, we're gonna be working on that as well. But this is the proposal. It's a step-by-step -step process that the client will go through. Um, so on step number one, they're gonna choose a package. Remember for this client, I'm offering them three choices. So I'm just gonna choose this one. Um, I configured that package that I just selected to also have add-ons. And you do that under the settings tab. So this one has three add-ons that the client could put into their package if they wanted to. And this product has options. So I'll add a canvas block. Then it gives them an overview, uh, the breakdown of their package and the payment schedule that I set up for them. Then they can fill in their information or update the information that I've already put into the system for them, just like that. And then they sign the contract. And you see how those variables are pre-populating here with the information that they've just chosen. And all my terms are here. And then the client will sign right here. And it's gonna record the, their IP address, the time and date that they signed. And as soon as that studio, I mean, as soon as that client signs that contract, ShuQ is gonna send you a notification to countersign. And then this client owes me a payment um, at booking time, so they can pay with credit card or they can pay by check. And I think I, oh, I chose Stripe, but I didn't set it up properly, so it's giving me an error. But they would see uh, Stripe's payment form here. Um, and before I proceed to the client site, now, you know, now that they've signed the, the contract, they now have a client site. And I'll show you that in just a second, but let me take a look at some of these questions. Um, let me just read them real quick. Does that contract show all of the dates of the events you set up um, on the job timeline um, or just the job, uh, the main job date? It depends on what variable you're using. Um, I think I was using the main event start date. So it was using uh, that particular variable. It's all dependent upon how you create that template. Uh, how much can the proposal area be customized? Currently, it can't really be customized at all, um, but like I said, we're gonna be working on improvements to that. And let's go to the client area. So here's the client site. Um, basically on the overview page, it shows all the event details, things on the timeline, right here. Um, over here, it shows the main package and the next payment. They can also see the emails that I've sent to them. They can also see any invoices. So let me click on this invoice. And they can also make payments here. So they can make payments right down here. Um, one other thing, they can also, they can print this out for their records as well. They can also view their contract right here. They can also update their contact information. So the idea behind the client area is that it just consolidates all of the information on the job. And if this person had multiple jobs with me, they would be able to select them up here and jump to, from job to job. So like somebody mentioned before that, you know, you have different family sessions every year, they would be able to go back to like 2017, 2016, so on and so forth. This client just has one job with me. Now, like I said, as soon as that client signs that contract, ShuQ is gonna notify you, right? And you're gonna come into ShuQ and there'll be a notice right here, right on the, under the uh, on the dashboard. It says the client has accepted the proposal. Click here to view the contract. So I can countersign it here. I can also jump to that job and countersign it on the job itself. Or I can go to this document section and sign it there. But it doesn't matter where I sign it. It looks like this. And as the studio, I countersign it. I accept the terms. It records my IP address. And that's what makes it a book job. 
So if we go back to that lead board, you'll see that job's no longer on this section and it jumped into an active job, okay? And I should have showed you this before, but it was moving through these different sections as we were doing certain things. But I can find it under my jobs tab. And it's right here. And you see how it's active. And once this job is completed, I would just mark it completed right up here. So, I mean, that's the basic process that a lead would go through, you know, for the booking process. Um, I don't want to get too much further into ShuQ. Um, like I said, next week we're going to talk all about the settings and how to, you know, configure some of that stuff. Um, as you probably saw, you know, to go through that proposal process, you'll need to set up your pricing, a contract template, um, and maybe a few other settings. So we'll talk about that next week. Um, but yeah, that's the basic uh, overview of what, you know, the system, how it works, and some of the main features and functionality on it. Um, if you guys have any questions, uh, feel free to type them in right now. And it looks like there are a few questions. Let me just uh, read these. Um, is it possible to change uh, the language proceed to client site? Um, th that can't be changed right now, but I will suggest that. And I'm just reading a few other the other questions here. Uh, so yes, if you change like the event date or the location, that would also update on the client site as well. Also, if you changed like the main contacts contact information, you know that would update on their end. Or if you mark an invoice paid, it would show as paid on the client side. Um, changing, you know, the email address that ShuQ sends from, um, that's coming in as well. So, you know, um, the first uh, change would be that it's going to be coming from, it'll show your company name. And then later on, we'll probably add the ability to send it from your own domain. Um, this is a good question. What would you suggest we work on between now and the next webinar? So if you're brand new to ShuQ and you're not a legacy member, um, I would recommend, first off, get this account information dialed in. There's some really important things under here, like uh, setting up your currency and your time zone. Um, you know, a lot of things are, you know, based on those things. So get, get this information dialed in first. Um, I would also work on configuring this job section. So specify the types of jobs that you do. You know, get rid of the ones that you don't use. Um, also, what types of roles would people have on your jobs? You know, if you're a portrait photographer, you probably don't need wedding roles, right? Um, and then event types. Those are like those other meetings um, that I mentioned or appointments. So, you know, configure those as well. Um, they're not hard to do. You know, I can get rid of one just by clicking the, uh, the delete button. Um, I can edit these just like that. Or I can add brand new ones up here. So all the job settings are the same. They all function the same way. Um, and then one really big one that you'll want to work on, or actually two, uh, templates. You want to work on your contract templates. So we saw this before. Uh, set this up. Put your variables in. You do that by adding, you add variables in here by double clicking on the variables in the list over here. And then also products and pricing. You want to get that stuff dialed in. We're going to be talking about all of those things in next week's webinar. So if you have questions about that, maybe you want to write them down as you're working on it this week, um, and then I can answer them. And then the following week after that, we're going to talk about some of the more advanced, um, you know, settings like, you know, syncing up your calendars, uh, setting up a contact form. We're going to talk about lead workflows. Um, another question here, if we are legacy, should we wait to be transferred over before we start using the system? What I recommend, um, you know, I mentioned this before at the top of the webinar, the new system doesn't have all of the new func old functionality, right? Um, we are adding to it and eventually it will have that functionality. Um, I recommend that you create like test jobs, you know, one or two, um, and go through the process and play the role of the client and the studio. And you'll really get a sense of, you know, what is available on the new system that way. 
Um, because like I said, there's a lot of features in the old system. Um, not everybody uses those, those, uh, you know, those functions. So it just depends on what your studio uses. So if there's something really important, like you use, uh, you know, shoot workflows, I can tell you that's not in the new system yet. In that case, you would want to wait. But once you have tested it out and it seems, you know, to have enough that you need, um, then you can let us know to migrate you over. Um, all right. Any other questions? There are a lot of good ones today. Um, like I said, if you have further questions, reach out to the support team right down here. Just submit a ticket and we'll respond to you. Um, if you have feature suggestions, you can submit them there. You can also send feature suggestions to beta at shuku.com. And uh, pretty soon we're going to have something where you can just do it right on the website without emailing. Uh, there's also the help center up here. If you get stuck on anything where you can find, uh, you know, videos and articles and, and whatnot. Um, how long are we looking to at to be migrated? Um, it depends. Um, we just started migrating studios last weekend, so it's it's kind of slow at first. You know, we're just doing a handful, like you know, 20 here and 20 there, um, making sure everything's right with that. Um, the more we migrate people, the faster it'll go. Let's put it that way. Um, if you have a legacy account, do you have to recreate contracts? Um, no, those things, those templates will be migrated over. And there actually is a page regarding migration. It's shuq.com slash migrate. And there's a, there's a video on here that sort of explains it, and there's all all sorts of other information here. So you can kind of, you know, check this out. It's shuq.com slash migrate. Um, any other questions, guys? Um, starter templates for contracts. There should be some in there. Um, they don't have uh, the terms in there, but they do have the variables that I mentioned. Um, if you want some terms, I can probably get them to you. We have some sample terms. I don't know how legally binding they are. You'd probably want to run it by a, an attorney, but I do have uh, some things. You can just reach out to the support team if you do want some terms. All right, looks like that is the last question. Um, I just want to thank everybody for joining us today. Um, you know, hopefully this was useful to you. Hope uh, sort of acclimate you to the new site. And uh, maybe we'll see you guys at future webinars. Like I said, we'll be talking about settings next week and the week thereafter. All right, guys, have a great rest of the week. Cheers. <laughs>